Hey guys, I'm back with another tip. Today we are going to talk about sound design. Um, I'm gonna show you how to make a wavetable, Reese type bass, I just call it a nasty bass, um, using your basic resampling workflow. And I'm gonna touch on how Reason 9 makes the process easier and faster. Note that you can apply these concepts to any synth, any DAW, any effect device. So I'm just gonna create a Thor I'm going to turn the filter frequency cutoff all the way up, turn the envelope amount to zero, and turn the sustain up. And I'm going to use the wavetable oscillator. Now you can use any wavetable. I really like the mixed waves. I think I'm going to go with mixed waves too. All right, so the goal here is to create a sound in a synth, have different parameters moving, have different automation going, filter movement, and then take the resulting sound, bounce it to audio, and further process it. So I'm just gonna right click on the position knob and select edit automation. And I'm just gonna draw in an upward sweep. I'm also going to play a note really quick. And I'm gonna draw the note out over one bar. Now in Reason, when you select a clip, if you hover your mouse over the side of the clip and you hold Option, you get a little clock symbol. This means you can time stretch it, and you can do this to any MIDI, so I can also do it to my sweep. All right, now here's where Reason 9 comes in. They've added a reverse MIDI feature. So I can just reverse my automation and now I have an upward sweep and a downward sweep. That's a lot easier than drawing another sweep. Next, I want some filter movement. Now you can use any filter or EQ. I'm gonna use a rack extension called D filter. I really like this filter because it's very visual. Um, I have control over my low frequency cutoff, my high frequency cutoff, the resonance for both, and then this dual frequency knob lets me move around the band that I just created. And if I change the mode to band stop, now the filter becomes a notch filter as opposed to a band pass filter. So. Sounds kind of nasty. I'm gonna distort it a little bit with a scream. So now I need to achieve that filter movement. I'm gonna target this dual frequency knob with an LFO. And here's where Reason 9 comes in again with Pulsar Dual LFO. Now this is a rack extension that's been around for a while, but they included it in Reason 9 for free. So I have it now. And it's just a utility device with two LFOs and an envelope. And it has multiple CV outputs, which makes it easy to route to other parameters. So now you can see, I routed the mod output of LFO1 into the dual frequency input, and now you can see this LFO is targeting it. Now I know what you're thinking. If you're an experienced Reason user, you're thinking, why do I need to use Pulsar? I can create any device I want that has LFOs with mod outputs, and I can use those to target the frequency band. That's very true, but Pulsar has a shuffle knob. I just love it. I just love it. Um, what this does is basically an LFO, low frequency oscillator, it's a cycled waveform. So as you can see, I have a sine wave selected. So it's basically doing this forever and ever, just a sine wave. If you turn the shuffle up, what it does is the cycle becomes two sine waves, one sine wave and then another sine wave and then repeats. If I turn the shuffle up, it lengthens the first sine wave and shortens the second sine wave. And that's what makes it sound kind of shuffly. I'm going to select the random waveform. Just so I get a little more variation. Um, I have this lag 
setting right here. And if I turn that up, what it does is it kind of acts as a low pass filter on the LFO waveform. So it'll kind of smooth out the edges. You can hear it more notably on a square wave. Just makes it a little more smooth. Cool. So we have this. Now it's time to bounce our sound to audio. So this is one of my favorite new features in Reason 9, bounce in place. All you Reason users out there, you know how long we've been waiting for this one. I'm glad that the wait was worth it because Propellerhead did it right. I can easily right click on a clip, select bounce in place, and my MIDI is muted, and I have an audio track with the bounced MIDI. This is really cool. Um, it's easier for me than having to freeze a whole track and bounce a whole track. So now I'm gonna right click on the audio that we just created and choose bounce clips to new samples. And then I'm gonna mute that audio because I'm not gonna use it. And now I'm gonna bring it into a sampler. Now you can use any sampler you want. I'm gonna use the NNXT because it gives me a little more precise control over the start and stop points and the looping. Um, I will say though, in the NN19, you're given a sample start knob and this knob can be automated. You cannot automate the start and stop points in the NNXT. If I right click, I don't get an edit automation option, but I don't need it. So I'm gonna go to song samples, unassigned samples, Thor 1 bounced and bring it into the sampler. Now it's important to set your root notes from pitch detection so that, you know, I know I was recording F when I played this. I wanna be able to hit F and hear F. And it looks like they did set my root note to F, but it's below the keyboard range. So I'm just gonna make the range longer. All right, now I am hearing my original sound. So here's where it gets fun. All right, I really like that. And I'm going to change the play mode to forward loop and mess with these loop start and end knobs. All right, so you hear the popping and clicking. I can go in and choose edit sample and just check this little box right here, crossfade loop. Smooths it out. So at this point, I can process it even further with some more distortion. And even more filter movement if I want. So there you have it, your basic Reese wavetable, I just call it nasty, bass. Um, that about wraps it up, but I do have a bonus tip for you guys. I'm just gonna create a radical piano. I'm gonna throw a player on it. I'm feeling something funky, so I'm gonna choose Dorian. And I'm just gonna play a little chord progression. Cool, so we have our progression. Now what I'm gonna do is make some reversed piano. So the way I would go about doing that is I would bounce this MIDI in place and create an audio clip and then reverse the audio clip and I would get some beautiful reverse piano. But then my chord progression would be backwards. So now I can easily reverse the MIDI, bounce in place, reverse my audio,
Who doesn't love some reverse piano? Come on. All right, so I hope this was helpful. And if you don't use Reason, I hope you can take these concepts and apply them to your DAW of choice. If you do use Reason, you need to pick up Reason 9. And as always, let us know if you have any questions. If you're a music producer, subscribe to our channel and stay up to date on the latest PureMind tutorial videos, track breakdowns, elite sessions, and more. Visit us at puremind.com. Oh, 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 oh,